So let's look at another example. Uh, suppose that all car owners fill up when they tank uh, for exactly half full. Okay. And uh, there is a gas station that has only one pump. And at the present time, average of 7.5 customers per hour arrive at the single pump gas station. That's your Lambda. And it takes an average of four minutes. So this was an hour, four minutes. Um, sorry. Uh, that was your Lambda, four minutes. So 60 over four is gonna be your mu. And assume that inner arrival service times are exponential, one, one pump, so it's MMR. For the present station, compute L and W. Expected number of people, expected number of cars in the gas station, including in line and being served, being uh, doing, uh, filling up their tank, and uh, expected time they spend at a gas station. All right, so is what's the queuing system? MM1. What's Lambda? 7.5, mu 60 over 4, 5, 5. And your row is going to be 0.5, less than 1. That's checked. And then your L, we just learned that L is row over 1 minus row, which is 1 cross. What is W? W is L over lambda, little root, um, which is 1 over 7.5, which is 0.13 hours. So it's pretty efficient. On average, there is just one car filling up their tank. All right. So, and uh, now think about this. Suppose that a gas shortage occurs and panic buying takes place. That's when people uh, uh, rush, such as the examples that happened during the pandemic. Uh, to model this phenomenon, suppose that all car owners now uh, purchase gas when their tanks are exactly three quarters full. So previously, if their tanks were half full, they would go fill up the tank. That was, that was our assumption. Now, if it's here, they go to the gas station. So we expect more people, we expect more people to go to the gas station. The lambda has increased, right? Since each car owner is now putting less gas into the tank, during each visit to the service, we assume that the average service time has been reduced to three uh, and one third of minutes, three minutes and 20 seconds. Why? Because previously they had to fill up half of the tank. Now they fill up only one fourth of the tank. So it takes less time. Uh, we want to see how this panic buying affects L and W. L was just one previously. And let's see. Queuing system is still MM1. And our lambda has increased. Why? Because uh, previously, uh, because now it takes um, half the time for, for them to realize that they need to go get gas, right? So, uh, they go twice as fast, uh, twice as much as before to the gas station. And so I just multiply lambda by two to get 15. And my mu has increased to 18 because it's faster. And uh, lamb, uh, rho is still less than one. Check. Now my L was rho over one minus rho is five cars. So now on average, there are five cars, one, filling up their tank for waiting. And W, which is uh, one over lambda, becomes 20 minutes. So you see how uh, increasing or changing these rates affects performance of the system or uh, characteristics of the system. <clears throat> All right, now we saw that row change from 0.5 to five over six and then L changed significantly from one to five. Now I'm going to increase rho, just trying to see uh, how L changes. And as you can see, I don't increase rho beyond one because beyond one, the system never uh, settles down for me to calculate that. Uh, as I increase it, you see that 
uh, it can go up to 100 cars. So there will be 98 cars waiting in line, one filling up their tank. If your row is 0.99, it means if your lambda is, gets closer to mu, mu is 18, lambda is 15. If lambda increases to 17 or close to 18, uh, then you're going to expect a huge line. So that gives you an idea of how important this row is. And <clears throat> also, it's good to know another usage of this uh, Little's row, Little's law, which is, which says L is equal to lambda times W. This can be applied to other applications, can be used in other applications. The queuing formula, uh, whenever, whenever in a system, you have an average amount of quantity present, you can think of that as L, and you have a rate at which there are arrivals. Uh, arrivals arrive to the system, that's your lambda, and W is average time, the quantity is spent. So average time is the quantity is spent in the system. Whenever you see that pattern, uh, you, can, you can use these, uh, this rule, L equals lambda times W. Let's look at an example. Our local McDonald's uses an average of 10,000 pounds of potatoes per week. So that we can think of that as our arrivals or lambda. The average number of pounds of potato on hand is 500,000 pounds, right? And so you I can think of that as L, expected number of people in, in the system or expected quantity present in the system. On the average, how long do potatoes stay in the restaurant before being used? That uh, calculating something like that helps us in our uh, procurement to, for example, think of uh, exploration of the products that we order. So I have L, I have lambda, I'm looking for W. We know that uh, W is L divided by uh, lambda. Therefore, I get 5,000 divided by 10,000. We get 0.5, everything was in weeks. So L, uh, W is going to be half a week. So each potato or each pound of potato spends on average half a week at the restaurant, including on the shelf being processed and consumed. All right, the next topic uh, or the next thing that we wanna look at is queuing optimization. Whenever we talk about optimization, it means we have a number of alternatives and we are trying to choose the best one. Something that optimizes our objective function. Our objective function is usually the number of people minimizing the number of people waiting in line or minimizing the wait time on the line and things like that. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at an example. Uh, there's a tool center and machinists work at the tool center and they go every, uh, on average, 10 of them per hour, so that's my lambda. Uh, arrive seeking tools. At present, the tool center is staffed by a clerk who is paid six dollars uh, per hour and who takes an average of five minutes to handle each request for tools. So 60 divided by five, mu is 12 right now. Since each machinist produces ten dollars worth of goods per hour, each hour that a machinist spends at the tool center costs the company ten dollars, which makes sense. The company is deciding whether or not it is worthwhile to hire at a four dollar per hour rate a helper for the clerk. And it says if you hire that clerk, it's gonna increase. Um, uh, increase the service time to four minutes from five to four, uh, which also means your mu is going to go up from 12 to 15, which means your row is going to go down, which means people will spend less time in line, uh, which means they're going to produce more and uh, you're going to save more money. But we want to do the calculation as engineers to see if it's actually worth it to hire the helper, right? 
So what are my alternatives when I talk about system optimization? I have alternatives and I want to choose the best one. Hiring the helper, not hiring, hiring the helper. So I'm going to calculate costs of the system under both scenarios and pick the best one. So my mu right now is 12, 60 divided by five, five minutes. It takes for the, uh, for that person who provides tools, five minutes. So, and service cost is $6 per hour. Lambda is 10, uh, machine cost is, this is just a summary of the data that was given to me. Okay. Service cost plus labor waiting cost. Okay. Uh, so when I'm comparing the two alternatives, I'm comparing the cost and that cost itself is the service cost plus labor rating cost. The cost that the person with the helper or without the helper incurs and also the time that I'm not producing basically that $10 per hour. So I would say the waiting cost of machinists is $10 um, and because W times that gives me L and so I have lambda number of machines joining the line. And they on average spend a certain amount of time in the system, in the, in the tool center to get their tools. So that number of machinists times the amount of time they spend times $10 gives me the waiting cost. And because W times Lambda is L, I just write that as 10 times L. So current system, total waiting cost, it's 10 times L and L is uh, Lambda over mu minus Lambda. So this is my current mu without helper. Okay, that's $50. And service time, service cost, which is the salary of the person working there is just $6. So total is going to be 56. Now the proposed system is going to reduce, it's going to increase that mu. So that mu increased to 15 this time. Um, and as you can see, 10, 10 times L, L is lambda over mu minus L uh, goes to $20 total service cost is the $6 that I already had plus $4 for the helper, $10. So the overall cost is $30, which is cheaper. So then it makes sense. So every, all of this was per hour. Per hour, I'm saving $26 if I hire that helper. Although I'm paying them $4 an hour, uh, I can see how much I can save. I can still save $26. So that is uh, MM1 optimization. Whenever we say optimization, we're talking about whether we, do, we should do something or not. And uh, the effect of that thing that we're doing to improve the system, the effect is usually on mu or lambda, which translates to uh, an improved value for L or W, which then in, in, uh, translates to some savings. <clears throat> So the review of everything we've seen so far, Lambda was the arrival rate. These are the things you're going to, you're going to see in your skeletal outline also. So you can use this to fill that out. Mu was the service rate. Note that both of these are numbers and both of them should have the same unit. And we defined row, Lambda over Mu should be less than one. <clears throat> if it's less than one, Pi j is going to be rho j uh, times one minus rho. Pi zero is just one minus rho. And L is lambda over mu minus lambda, LQ, L, and Ws. And all of these are time. These are number. Number of people, expected number of people waiting in line, expected number of people in the system, expected number of people uh, being served. And the other ones are time. Expected time and cost to spends in the system, 
expect the time to spend in line, spend the time to spend in the system. So now you should be able to work on this example. So please pause the video at this point, read the problem description and uh, solve the example. As you can see, uh, it's describing a, a check-in process at an airport, which is a con, which is a very good example of a, and a queuing system. So here it says, uh, each airline passenger and his or her luggage must be checked to determine whether they have they are carrying anything illegal. Suppose that the Gotham City Airport, uh, in that airport, an average of 10 passengers per minute arrive. That's my, and it's exponential, so that's my lambda. To check passengers for weapons, the airport must have uh, uh, a checkpoint consisted of a metal detector and a baggage x-ray. I want to see how many servers they have. I'm reading that with that with that in my mind. Whether the checkpoint is in operation, two employees are required. Okay, we want to see if that is an indicator of two servers or one server. A checkpoint can a checkpoint can check an average of 12 passengers per minute. So those two employees are part of just one checkpoint. Uh, it doesn't mean that there are two servers. They are just components of, this, of that one server. And as you can see, mu is just 12. Under the assumption that the airport has only one checkpoint, so MM1 so far, uh, answer the following questions. <clears throat> Queuing system is MM1, Lambda was 10, mu was 12, Rho is 10 over 12 less than one, checked. So now I can answer the first question. What is the probability that a passenger will have to wait before being checked for weapons? Um, what is the probability? So probabilities are usually associated with pies. We'll have to wait. When does a passenger wait? When there is someone in the system already? Uh, so it's, it's basically one minus pi zero, right? Because, uh, Pi zero is the only time the, the passenger won't wait. So what's the probability that they won't wait? Uh, what's the probability that they have to wait is one minus that, which is one minus pi zero. Pi zero itself is one minus rho. So that gives me five over six. B, on average, how many, it's talking about L, passengers waiting in line to enter the checkpoint. So. L sub Q, we already had calculated, we already developed the formula for that, rho squared over one minus rho, which is 25 over six customers. And third question, on average, how long will a passenger spend, it's talking about time, so it's a W, um, spent at a, check, a checkpoint. It's not talking about WQ, it's not talking about W sub S, it's the W as a whole. So to calculate W, first I have to calculate L and then divide by lambda. L itself is rho over one minus rho and that divided by lambda five over six divided by one over six, the whole thing divided by um, uh, my lambda, which is 10. That gives me 0.5. So that is half a minute. <clears throat> OK. Next, we are going to talk about queuing systems with a capacity, MM1s with a capacity. <clears throat> 